All right, so in this video, we're going to go through sample question 43 from the Society of Actuaries exam P list of sample questions. So a company takes out an insurance policy to cover accidents that occur at its manufacturing plant. This probability, uh, uh, sorry, the probability that one or more accidents will occur during any given month is 0.6. The probability of accidents that occur in different months are mutually independent. Calculate the probability there will be at least four months. <laughs> there will be at least four months in which no accidents occur before the fourth month in which at least one accident occurs. I remember this question. This question sucks. I hate it. It's confusing. Um, I mean, I get it now, obviously, but I think this is the first question I just when I was doing these practice questions that I just didn't understand. The language is a bit confusing here. But what this essentially is, is an application of something called the negative binomial distribution, uh, which is a more general term of a geometric distribution. Now, what that essentially is used for is a situation where you say, uh, I need the probability of having, uh, say you, you, you have a situation where you have a pass-fail scenario and you wanted the probability of having, well, let's say, X amount of fa failures before Y, your Y success. So your eighth failure of having eight failures before your second success or, you know, whatever the numbers may be. Uh, in this case, you want to calculate the probability there will be at least four months in which no accidents occur before the fourth month in in which one accident occurs. Uh, this might seem weird, but I think it'll be more useful to classify accidents as a success and no accidents as a failure. All right. The negative binomial distribution has this following uh, probability formula, right? Uh, the probability that you have uh, a certain amount of success, uh, failures before a specific success is equal to um, y, which is the amount of failures plus, or so I, I kind of, because I'm not going to use that variable, uh, plus r, which is the amount of successes, minus 1, choose r, which is, again, the amount of successes, minus 1, multiplied by the probability uh, of a success raised to the uh, r, which is the amount of, you know, successes you have, multiplied by q, or 1 minus p, whatever you prefer, raised to the y, which is the amount of failures. Okay, so there are a few situations that this is broken down into now, right? You want at least four months in which no accidents occur, before the fourth month in which at least one accident occurs. So let's figure that out, right? We have to do one for each of the first four months. So let's first calculate the probability in uh, there being zero months before the fourth uh, accident occurs, right? So that's going to be the following. So the probability that zero months pass. Uh, Ranver, I don't even know what Ranver really is, um, is the following. So, they're going to be, there we go, they're going to be zero uh, failures, four successes minus one over four minus one, right? Ends up being three choose three. Times the probability of successes, so that's um, 0.6, uh, one or more accidents occur, 0.6, 
raised to the fourth power times you know one minus p raised to the zero power which is just one unnecessary to kind of write i suppose three choose three was unnecessary to write as well so i'm just going to put this into the calculator to figure out what this would be and that's equal to 0 0.1296 now, we got to figure out the probability of there being exactly one month in which no accidents occur before the fourth month in which an accident occurs. Okay, so that's going to be one plus four, right? One is the number of failures, four is the success, minus one, choose four minus one so that's going to end up being four choose three right times the probability of a success which is 0.6 raised to the fourth times 0.4 raised to the first and i'm just going to go ahead and calculate this And this is equal to 0 0.20736. And then I do the following for, uh, I do the same for uh, 2, and I do the same for 3. I'm not going to do the same for 4 because it's at least 4, right? And I, and I want to find the complement, right? So the uh, probability equal to 3. And I'll just quickly do these out, right? So it's going to be, again, 2 uh, plus 4 minus 1 over 4, mi or choose 4 minus 1. Uh, and then times 0.6 to the 4th, times 0.4 to the 2nd. There's a student that I worked with once said to the tooth, which was ridiculous and hilarious. And then uh, this one's going to be 3 plus 4 minus 1, choose 4 minus minus. 1 multiplied by 0.6 raised to the 4th multiplied by 0.4 raised to the 3rd. I'm going to go ahead and calculate each of these now. Okay, and this gets us 0 0.20736. And finally, we're going to do, let's see, 6 choose 3 multiplied by 0 0.6 to the 4th multiplied by 0.4. To the third. And that's 0 0.15 or 16588. So what have we essentially calculated? Uh, let me let me add these up first and then we'll discuss that in a moment. Uh, so 0.12 Nine six plus point two zero seven three six plus another point two zero seven three six plus point one six five eight eight. Okay, and that's equal to. All of that added up, 0 0.7102. Now, what have we just calculated? We've calculated the probability 
that the amount of failures we have is less than or equal to three, or I'll just say less than four. Now, what do we do with this? What the question's actually asking us, though, is the probability that the number of failures we have is greater than or equal to four. The probability that there will be at least four months in which no accident occurs. Okay, and that's easily just the complement of this. I don't recall if I mentioned at the beginning why, why we did it this way. Uh, it's because the probability that at least four months were no accident occurs, that could be four months, that could be five months, that could be six months, up to an infinite amount of months. That's too many numbers to calculate. That's impossible. Um, so we calculate the complement and do one minus the complement to find this. So one minus 0 0.7102 uh, is equal to point, uh, 0 0.2898 to two decimal places, 0 0.29, which lines up with answer choice D. Okay, uh, sorry, the calculations for this one were a bit weird. I don't do them out beforehand because I think it's beneficial for you to see me work out the problem the way I normally would uh, and the way you should, or at least the way I think you should. So let's just quickly go over what this problem was talking about. It gave us a situation where the probability of an accident occurring in a particular month is 0.6, and it says the probability of an accident occurring uh, is independent, right, of, of other months. And then it says, calculate the probability there will be at least four months in which no accident occurs before the fourth month in which at least one accident occurs. What does that mean? Well, if we look at this as a situation of either an accident occurs or doesn't occur, we can see that this is, this is like a pass-fail scenario, success or failure. Now, what do we want to label the success and what do we want to label the failure in terms, of, in terms of how easy this will be to work with? The number that's fixed should be the successes, in my opinion. So here, the fourth month in which at least one accident occurs, right? That four stays fixed throughout all of my calculations. Okay, and this part where it says calculate the probability that there will be at least four months in which no accident occurs, that's the thing that I'm changing. So I'm going to make that a failure, right? Although I, I think this can be done the other way around. So now that I've decided which, I, uh, which one's going to be my success and which one's going to be my failure, identify what the question's asking. It's asking for the probability that the number of failures is greater than or equal to. Now, like I mentioned before, that's an infinite amount of possibilities. I can't test out all of those. I don't have the time. Neither do you. So I compute the complement, right? I test, okay, what's the probability that there are zero failures before the fourth success? What's the probability that there's one failure before the fourth success? Probably that there's two failures before the fourth success. Same for three, right? And all of this comes from just me having memorized the uh, probability formula for a negative binomial. This is very important for all your discrete distributions and your continuous distributions. Know, for, for the discrete, know the probability formula, expected value, variance, um, and then the moment generating function if you can. Uh, although I don't think the moment generating functions for discrete show up as much. For continuous, know the PDF, the CDF, uh, expected value, variance, and definitely know those moment generating functions, okay? M make a chart and memorize that chart, just those things that I just described. I think that covers it. If there are any questions or anything you think I missed, leave something down in the comments. I'll answer any questions to the best of my abilities. If you want to see more questions like this, I have a playlist 
right? Check that out. Uh, it's more of these sample, uh, you know, Society of Actuary questions for exam P. And uh, if this video helped you out, hit the like button, subscribe. That definitely helps me out. But other than that, good luck.